many of you will know. But you know, I was thinking, there's a lot of people that are here that understand that there is great power in prayer. And uh, that's what the song is about. So here's hoping I don't mess it up. Just see someone down on their knees talking to the air where it's lost on a breeze. Some just see teardrops falling to the floor, just a waste of time. Not anything more, but it's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares. And if you need some proof, I can tell you there is power. Tell you about the time the Lord gave me peace. Trouble all around me, He calmed the storm in me. And I remember when I cried out, Yeah, He saved my soul. Some have their doubts, but I know that I know. A direct line to the throne room Where you can find someone who cares Always listening, yeah, that don't change. Don't mean the small man. Call on his name. Else. It's a red light to the throne room where you can find. Someone who cares And if you need some proof I can tell you There is power Power in prayer It's a job This morning, we're going to be reading out of God's Word in Psalms, chapter 30, verses 1 through 5. Give you just a couple seconds to get there, and we'll 
we'll start. Here the Bible reads, verse 1. I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, some time ago, my uh, grandkids come to give me a gift, a piece of candy. <laughs> then they sat down to watch me eat the candy, and that was my warning that something was awry. Yeah. And, but being the grandfather that I am, did not wish to disrupt their raucous behavior and anticipation of increased laughter momentarily. So I popped the candy into my mouth. And I got to tell you, for the first 30 seconds, it was a bitter surprise. And they laughed and laughed and laughed because I had that sour look on my face. The one that they had anticipated, looked forward to, and uh, was ready to celebrate my spitting it out. But I did not, for I am strong. As a grandfather, we have learned over the years to never let them see our weakness. Right. <laughs> but after a little while, the bitterness began to fade and sweetness came through. This is a, a warhead is what it's called. I think the name is certainly appropriate because there was a war going on with my taste buds. Three of them were saying it's sour. Six of them were saying it's beginning to turn sweet. And the other said, spit it out. <laughs> but sometimes bitterness is easy for us to see in the world that we're living in today. Matters of fact, keeping bitterness out of our life can be tough. I remember preaching a message about this, the same message that I'm preaching to you this morning. I talked about this scripture once in the past, and I thought, you know, I'd like to revisit that because we all like to think that we would like to be like David. When we read those first four verses, David said these things, you have lifted me up and you have healed me and you have kept me alive. And then he encourages the readers to sing unto the Lord. But I, I wanted you to consider this. If you've been lifted up, you had to be been down at one time or another. Amen? So if you've been healed, you had to be sick as well. To give praise, to be kept alive, your life has to have been in danger at some point. And then he says, you can sing unto the Lord because you have experienced these things. They have come to you. You've walked through these valleys. And in these valleys, you learned that Christ was the lily of the valley. He was down there in the valley with you. You learned that you were not alone. You learned that someone was walking with you. You learned that you were stronger than hell perceived because yes, I have gone through the valley, but my God has been with me. He held my hand and he spoke to me in the valley and let me know that I am not alone. He said, his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy 
comes in the morning. To get to the joy, you've got to go through some weeping. And I think many of us, time and time again, have gone through some weeping in our lives. Maybe we have wept over our children. Maybe we have wept over our job situation. We may have wept over finances. We may have wept uh, over so many things that have come our way. But God has still been on the throne through it all. Amen. And Christ is still the Lord through it all. And somehow, we got up the next morning and realized that we are cast down, but we are not destroyed. Destroyed. We get right back up. We get to the morning. You've got to go through the night. Amen. I remember a preacher talking about, he said it this way. He said, I understand that joy comes in the morning, but God, there is time and time again. I want to just ask you how long your night is, because if I know how long your night is, I know that I'll be able to handle it. But sometimes we don't know how long the night is. Amen. It comes right into the next day and the night is still there. And we say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We are no different different uh, than the altogether lovely on the cross of Calvary who cried out the same thing. Oh my God, my God, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah. God never did. Never has. I even thought about that on the cross of Calvary when Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sebeteni. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that very moment in time, one of the guards grabbed a hyssop. And hyssop was all about salvation. It was for the cleansing of the soul. And he raised that hyssop up to the lips of Jesus. And when Jesus saw it, he wouldn't taste it. He wouldn't take it. He understood at that moment that his God had not forsaken him. And he was able to say, it is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. You see, God does not forsake us. William Scruggy, in, in the translation said, At nightfall, weeping comes as a guest to tarry. But in the morning, joy comes to stay. Yeah. It reminds us that, yes, we've gone through those things. And David said, we've gone through those things. But we are not forsaken, not at all. The, the mistake that many of us have made is to assume that weeping has come to stay and joy is forever gone, but that is not true. We have gone through some times that have caused us to cry, but hasn't the joy actually come again? Time and time again, I remember there have been times in my nighttime when I said, Lord, I don't even want to face tomorrow because when I get up in tomorrow, it's going to be here. Now, I don't know that I'm strong enough to handle it, but in the morning when the sun came out, I realized that I am not destroyed. I'm still here and God is still on the throne and Christ has still got me by the hand and so I rejoice and you say but your problem was still there yes but when the sun come up let me tell you there's something about the sun coming up that's important to this fella now I remember the doctor saying in the middle of the night he says he's not going to make it through the night and then them rascals walked right out of the room which I still haven't gotten over by the way I always thought if your patient's going to die you ought to hang around and at least say goodbye and I began to talk to God through the night. Yeah. It was a good conversation because after a little while, I forgot to be afraid about what that doctor had just said. Matters of fact, I got so happy that I decided to talk to him all night long. He seemed to be up. All right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, he didn't say like me, well, I better get to bed so you kids can get home. <laughs> he just stayed up with me. So I talked with him, talked with him. I told him everything, the most mundane thing. I can just imagine the one who stood on the back porch of nowhere and formed the universe, how thrilled he was uh, to let me tell him about my sheep. <laughs> This creator who spoke and the stars began to shine. How thrilled he must have been to hear me talk about how much I like tea with peach in it. You say, well, preacher, that's kind of a dumb thing to talk to God about. Hey, you weren't there. Amen. But he was. And he kept the watch all night long. Before long, I looked up and the sun was coming up. And I'm thinking, oh my, the sun is coming up and I'm not dead. I had forgot I was supposed to die during the night. But God said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He said, listen, he, wanted, he said, listen, I want you to understand something, my boy. As you and I talked... God, I had you, boy. I had you in my hand, and everything was okay. First thing I notice about these scriptures is that it lets us know that there is going to be some bitter times. Bitterness comes. Amen? 
I don't have time this morning to go into it, but, but if I was to go through the scriptures and show you time and time again, God's people are not excused from trouble. Trouble comes. The question is not, are you going to have trouble? Because you are. But how are you going to respond to it? Really is the question here. So how did David respond? He said, look at this. I will extol thee. I will worship you. Even though I may have to go through the problems and I may go through trouble. Listen, I will extol. Look at how God described the making of two cherubims in the mercy seat of God. He said, I want you and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work shall you make them. In other words, uh, they're not going to be beautiful uh, until you beat them into shape. And maybe God has had to beat some of us into shape. But one of these days, one of these days, the altogether lovely is going to lift us up. Uh, the potter uh, is going to take that masterpiece that he has made on his wheel and he's going to show it to the father and say father this is what my hands have wrought this is what my blood has bought and this is what I give to you and hear our father say oh my son how beautiful how glorious is your creation they were physical representations of spiritual beings but he wanted to make sure that they understood that they were beaten into the proper shape First Peter said, Blessed be God, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who is according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice that now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness, though through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, in whom now you see him, not yet you still believe, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. In other words, the devil said to us, I have brought you through the valley. And we look at him and say, yes, uh, through the valley of the shadow of death. And still, I fear no evil for God is on the throne. <laughs> through heaviness of manifold temptations. There's a lot of things that tempt us. Amen. And, uh, in First Thessalonians, to see, see that none, none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, being both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Wait, God, I don't know how to give thanks in all things. Well, that's true, isn't it? But you see, that's the difference between bitterness and sweetness. There are some bitter things that come in our world and in our time, in our families, all around us. But there is a sweetness that's still there, even in the midst of the bitterness. And it reminds us that this is not all there is. This is not all there is. Weeping endures for the night, but joy. Listen, this weeping is come keep you company this night. But he's not, he's just a friend that's staying overnight. I want you to understand in the morning time, joy is coming to stay. Because you just can't take away the joy of God. When you love him, when you care about him, I have seen it time and time again. I remember a sister, a lady by the name of Sister Kennard. She had lost her mother. Her husband lost the father. Her uh, baby uh, needed a kidney transplant and her son was going to give her the kidney and his wife was pregnant full term. All of this is going on at the same time. And she was so, so miserable. But she stood up. And all of this bitterness around her. She stood up in church and I said, well, we're going to hear about it now. And she said, I just want to thank my God because he's with me every step of the way. I will never forget that as long as I live. With tears running down her face in the midst of her bitterness, she talked about the joy that she had with God. Job had gone through some trouble. 
And Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job was saying, Yes, I'm going through everything, but still yet, blessed is the name of the Lord, because this is not all there is. One of these days, gravity is going to let loose of this body, and I'm going to fly. The grave cannot hold me. Death cannot hold me. I'm coming forth victorious, because in me there is a spirit of love and joy, unspeakable and full of glory, and I will arise at my time, and my eyes shall behold him, and not another. Yeah. Though the skin worms devour my body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Amen. Can you imagine how the devil must have felt? As Job said, listen, naked I came into the world, naked I'm going to leave, but blessed be the name of the Lord. The devil has been saying, I have taken your family, I have taken your wealth, I have taken everything you got. No, you did not take everything I have, because in me there is something moving that you cannot touch, and it's letting me know. And I'm all right. I said it before, God is not nearly so worried about the circumstances of our life as He is concerned about how we respond to them. Our proper response is always saying, you know, there's something, there's a little something left over. Yeah. Amen. Amen? There's something, just a little more down inside. When a problem comes into your life, there are two things going on. Well, I'll explain it to you this way. Then said his wife unto him, Job... Dost thou still retain thine integrity? You have something still moving around inside of you, Job? I mean, look at you. You're a mess. She said, why don't you just curse God and die? Well, I've got to tell you something. That has never been to me a woman that I'd want to be married to. Amen. Amen. I'd like a little bit more encouragement. I got my way home. You could say, boy, you really nailed that song today, even though I made three mistakes. Why don't you just curse God and die? Man, I don't think I'd like that at all. I'd like a little, oh, honey, it's going to be okay. Would you, would you? All the men are looking at me. I don't want none of that stuff. I'm a man. Yeah, too bad for you. I want all that stuff. He said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. Are you saying that we receive good from God and we praise Him, but if bad things come, we quit praising Him? He said, uh, Matter of fact, the Bible said, in all of these things, Job did not sin with his lips. I like that. The devil tries to get us to look at our flesh and give up, but God wants us to look at him and praise him. I want you to look at what I've done. I took you out of the miry clay and I set your feet on a solid foundation. Let me tell you what I've done. When hell tried to grab a hold of you, I said, no, this one's mine, and you cannot have it. When it comes our time to leave this world, the grave can't even hold us back. But the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions, even we're not so. I would have told you, but I go away to prepare a place. But if I go away, lift up your heads now. If I go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also, I am the resurrection and the life. I have everything you need. Remember, God said, I am here. I'm here as an appointment I promised that I would be. I am here in all his keeping grace. And he has kept us through troubles and trials. Some of us need to understand that he is here even in our training, and we're still being trained. Amen? Yes. He is here for all of his time until we see him in the hereafter, in the eternity. And my response is, I, I, I'm just going to praise him. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Yes. Amen. And I will maintain mine own ways before him. 
so that my God might be pleased with me. So yes, I remember that warhead. I put it in my mouth and it was exceedingly bitter. And the kids, Andrea and Elena, laughed and laughed and laughed at the look on my face because of the bitterness. But I wouldn't let them see that too much. The first initial gave it away. If you've ever had one of those things in your mouth, it reminds you that you are in the perpetual kissing mode. <laughs> Except if you do it too often, you probably won't get a kiss. And he said, isn't that good, grandfather? Very, very good. Yes, sir. Best one I ever had. Last one I ever had, too. I've not eaten another one. Have any, y'all, anybody in here like them? One sorry grandkid. It might have been her that gave it to me. Now I'm thinking, it was a long time ago. It might have been her that gave it to me. Wasn't you? Well, now that's the thing that they've always said to me as well. Wasn't me. I didn't do it. My son was an absolute art form, and I didn't do it. <laughs> or I don't know why I did it. Most of the time, he didn't know why he did it, but he did it anyway. But I remember that thing. It was sour indeed until the sweetness came. The farther you, the longer you held the bitterness, after a while, the sweetness would come through. You just had to get past the bitterness before the sweetness come through. Isn't that true? God said, down here, there is no continuing city. The good news is that we are pilgrims and are strangers and we're seeking a city that's yet to come. Down here, there is some bitterness that may come our way. There may be some bitterness that we have to face. There may be bitterness in our job situation. There may be bitterness in our family situation. But God says, hold on, hang in there because I'll show you where the sweetness is and I'll bring you to the sweetness and then you'll be pleased indeed. God did not bring us this far to lose us. God has got us in the palm of his hand and in there we ought to rejoice saying yes I may have to go through some trouble for a little while but my day is going to come and I will arise victorious and God will vindicate his own and I will arise to be with him listen to be absent from this body is to be present with our Christ yeah. remember he said I am here I am here at first, you may not perceive it. The bitterness is all around you. But don't you give up. Don't you give in. Because I believe with all of my heart that God will always vindicate his own. So I'm going to keep right on trying. Yeah. I'm going to keep on trying. I remember when I first started out in this business, the devil let me know that the world is getting worse and worse. And you're a preacher. And you won't be able to keep your own children well. All of my children are in the church. So he was a liar then. He's a liar now. And God said, hold on. And I will save your household. And I'm going to believe it until the moment that I see him face to face I will not let go Hallelujah. Amen. though he slay me yet I will trust in him and I will maintain my own ways before him I'll trust him I'll hang in there until the very end so the psalmist said I will worship you O Lord for thou hast lifted me up. Has he not lifted some of you up before? Yeah. Amen. You, you've made my foes not be able to rejoice over me. I, I got to tell you something. I, I believe for every one of us that come through the bitterness of life and begin to praise God on the other side of that little bitterness to come our way, that it's got to make the devil awfully mad. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Yes, I was sick. Oh, Lord, thou hast brought me up the, my soul from the grave, and thou hast kept me alive. But I was pretty close, Lord, until you grabbed a hold of me. So I, I'm not going down to the pit, so I will sing, oh, Lord. I, I will sing as one of your saints because you've kept me, and you continue to keep me. How marvelous is our God. Amen. In all the earth there is none like and unto him. 
There's something special about that name, amen? amen. In all the world, there is no name like that name. That name, that name of Jesus that comes stealing into a hotel, or not a hotel, but a, 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 a hospital room when you don't have any hope at all. Yeah. And he says, I'm with you. That voice that comes when we're praying in the midnight hour and maybe sometimes we don't even know where our children are, but we say, Lord, please, please protect them. And we're able to close our eyes and go to sleep because he somehow is keeping the watch and we believe it. We, we just naturally assume that he is because he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. We trust him. We believe in him. And God delivers again and again and again. Well, there may be sometimes a bitterness that come into your life. But lift up your head, little flock. This is not all there is. God is on your side. And you know God loves you. He truly, truly does love you. And he wants to see you well and saved. But sometimes, you know, we, we don't take advantage of what we have. And maybe there's somebody here in this crowd tonight or today that does not know the Lord in pardon or remission of sin. What a wonderful day it would be to say, Lord, I've got some bitterness in my life, but I, I'd like to know the sweetness is coming. Yeah. And, and I want you to take me today. And change me. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved today, Lord. Today, I want to give my heart to you. Today, I want to start off brand new. You know, and our God can do that. He can give you a day one where you start off brand new. If you'd like him to. As they get a song this morning, I want to plead with you to come and give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, come unto me, all you that labor on a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Listen, my burden is not so heavy that you cannot bear it. I'll help you bear it. But it's up to you today, right now, this time, this place, God is calling out to you. Would you like to come? Would you like to come? If you've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, how about this Sunday? There'll be somebody to pray with you. If you want somebody to pray with you, you just come up here to this altar right here on my right, your left, and somebody will join you here. And if you want to pray alone, you come up to this altar over here and nobody will bother you. You can just talk to God. But if you want somebody to pray with, come over here. If you want to pray alone, come here. But don't leave this place unprepared to meet God. As they sing, step Amazing up. grace, how sweet.
over to the Wolford Pond for a baptism right after service. We're just going to be baptized. Is Lee here? From? Marysville. If Lee doesn't show up, I will be enlisting well-dressed people to go into the water with me. Today. I sent out a text to all of my elders this morning and wondered why not a single elder responded to me. It's always helpful if the text actually leaves your phone. <laughs> I was concerned till I got here and it said, your high tech, high dollar smartphone Don't know how to send a text to that many people at one time. It sent to, gave me a little mark on it that says, you want to try that again? Yes. So for all of you elders who were supposed to be told to bring baptismal clothes, if you were any kind of spiritual giant, you would have anticipated <laughs> my text and prepared thereof. But... That's a really long explanation as to why I messed up and trying to shift the blame to somebody else. <laughs> but we're going to the bapt... I heard you're going to be baptized too, yes, this morning. So we have two to be baptized this morning. So uh, it's over to Wolford Pond, and uh, we'll be going right after services. May the Lord bless you and God keep you. Remember to tell somebody something good about what God's doing in your life. Tell somebody something good about what God's doing in your church. But please take a moment or two and tell somebody something good about God. You'll have something really good to talk about, and God will be pleased with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't look blank back there. This week you need to tell somebody God is good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother, what's your name again? Ed. Ed. Getting old, Ed. <laughs> Would you dismiss this assembly in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray and we thank you for the words that we heard. We ask, Lord God, to write upon the tablets of our hearts. Lord God, to you know, 